Hi, this is Hershey Pro with the Dr. Vax channel, and we're going to have a blast today. We're going to make nameplates. They could be used as luggage tags. The concepts I'm going to teach you could be used anytime you want to put an embossed name on top of an item. But what's most exciting about it is we're going to print in multiple colors on a single color printer. Specifically, I'm going to be using an Ender 5. This applies to any FDM printer. You can use the same technique. Make sure you watch the whole video because we're going to cover all four steps. How you design the object, how you install a special script into Cura, how you slice it in Cura, and then how you print it on a 3D printer. Okay, hold on and let's learn something together. The first step in producing our sign or our luggage tag, our object, uh, something that looks potentially like this, is to use Tinkercad. I'm using Tinkercad because that's all you need. It's very simple. You can use it from a desktop. You can use it from, an, from a tablet. It's really easy to use. So go to Tinkercad.com, sign in, go through the sign-up process, and now we're going to create a new design you'll see this will take literally a couple minutes. The first step is it, uh, Tinkercad gives you a random name. We're going to click on the name and type in sign example. And now I'm going to click on the box on the left-hand side, drag that into the surface and set its dimensions. So we're going to make it 100 wide we'll make it, let's say, 30 deep. And now height is very important. The higher we make this, the more plastic it's going to take, the longer it's going to take to print. So let's make it three millimeters, which will be enough for it to be relatively rigid, um, but um, at the same time, it won't take too long to print. Now let's go and find our text icon. We're going to drag some text onto our surface. I'm going to change the color on the text just to make it easier to see. Height here is important again. Now we're going to want this to be embossed, to sit above. And let's think about height. If our layer height is 0.2 millimeters, then we'll have five layers for every millimeter. So therefore, if I want 10 layers, which will give it a really nice deep color, you won't be able to see anything through it, that will be very solid. Then I want two millimeters, two divided by 0.2 is 10. I want two millimeters above. So I'm going to make this actually a total of three millimeters tall. And then when I position it, Instead of positioning on the base, where it would be the same height as the sign, I'm going to position it two millimeters up. So the three millimeters of the letter, two millimeters up from the work plane, that's five millimeters. If the base is three millimeters, that'll give us two above the base. Now, why am I embedding it in the base at all? Why not just lay it on top? Um, and the reason is it ensures that if I have any errors in placement, it's still really solid when I group it together. So we're going to drag this onto our surface here. I'm going to move it up two millimeters. And then let's take and give it some text and make it a little bit smaller, move it around here, group it together. And now, we have our sign. And if I rotate this, you can see that it is above the top of the surface. The bottom is three millimeters. We can zoom in here. And the top is a little less. You can see the top is two millimeters. So let's rotate it back. Let's go to export. Export it as an STL file. And now we're ready to slice it. But before we slice it, we have to install a new script in Cura so we can tell it to stop at the layer that has the type so we can change the color. Now remember, our base is three millimeters. 
the 0.2 millimeters per um, layer, that would mean we have 15 layers before we hit the top. So that's something we can think about when we get to this next step. The 3.6 version of Cura does have a stop at layer feature. However, it wasn't designed to work with all printers. And in the case of our Ender 5, I have not had good success with it. There is a free script available on Thingiverse. So you go to Thingiverse.com. I will link this in the notes. And this script called Change Filament at Z um, is a script that works very, very well with all of the standard Marlin-based printers. We're going to want to use Change at Height. So the name will actually be called Change at Height when it's in Cura. Uh, we're going to just go to Thing Files, click on Change at Height, and then we're ready to install that in Cura. So let's bring up Cura here. We're going to go to Help in Cura, and I'm actually going to get rid of this browser behind this, make this a little bigger to make it a little easier to see. We're going to go to Help and click on Show Configuration Folder. By doing this, independent of, I'm on a Mac, but whether you're on a Mac or a PC, this will take you to the right place. You will get the native file dialog here. Uh, that's what, It looks this way because I am on a Mac. And I'm going to double click in Scripts. Now you see in my case, I have changed the height already in here. If I didn't, all you would do is go to your download folder, wherever you've put that, and you would drag it into, I'm going to replace it, drag it into the script folder. So in the scripts subdirectory, under show configuration, you wanna now have change at height py. You can verify that that is in place by going to extensions, post-processing, modify g-code, click on add script, and you should see change at height and a number. The number is not a layer, that's the version number of the software. It's, I think it's a bad design, but the, whoever built this software, we can check on Thingiverse, I don't remember the name, did a really nice job with it. So we are going to add this by clicking on it. And then we can close it because you'll see now that there's an icon in the corner and anytime you click on that icon, it will give you a series of options. We're going to use those. Now we're going to go and open up our model and um, we will see that that comes into Cura. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is prepare it, slice it. And the reason is we want to go to layer view and let's zoom this in quite a bit and verify when it starts creating the letters, but not the letters inside the base, but when it starts building them on the outside. And the way we can be doubly sure is we can watch the actual extrusion process and make sure that this is not taking and drawing anything in other than the letters. So if I go back down to 15, which we calculated manually was the last layer of the top, we'll see it's actually still painting the top. If I go to 16, which makes sense because that's the number we calculated it would be at, we're all set. So now we have to click on this little item here and say pause at layer 16. You can click on change filament at pause depending on your printer that will have an effect or not. If you do that on an Ender 5, you end up getting two beeps instead of one. Um, I prefer to not cool the extruder at pause because I'm going to want to take out the old filament and put in new filament. So I want the extruder to be hot. I do leave the beep on, but generally I take and watch. I leave everything else to the defaults. Now we can click prepare again. And now we can print either by saving it to a file or printing it via Octoprint. Now let's talk about that for a moment. 
If you save it to a file and put it on a SD card and put it into your printer, you'll be able to use the front panel of your printer to resume the print when it pauses. If, however, you take and print it via Octoprint, your printer will pause, it will say um, press to continue, but it won't, you won't actually be able to continue from the front panel because it will be under the control of Octoprint. So you have to go into Octoprint and say resume in Octoprint. In the example I'm going to show you in a moment, we're going to do it from the front panel of the printer. Now watch as I go through the steps to print this model. So I produced the model in Tinkercad. I sliced it in Cura using the stop at layer plugin, the script. It's actually called a script, it's not a plugin. And now we're going to print it. So the first step is we're going to insert the SD card. We're going to then select the object from the front panel. Then we're going to start the print. Now that the print is starting, we can watch the platform on the Ender 5. One of my favorite features of the Ender 5 is that the platform moves on the Z axis and not on the Y axis. We can watch it move up. After a couple moments, it will start printing. Now we have to wait for the print to get to the point where it will pause and then the front panel will say, will beep and will say, press to continue. We're going to remove the old filament and now we're going to insert the new filament. We're going to click on the front panel again to continue the print. Okay, I hope you found this uh, interesting, um, that you'll find this useful. Uh, this is something you can make for friends and family. You can make it with your grandchildren. Everyone will love this uh, project. And if you did find it helpful, please give me a like, subscribe, but more importantly, just share this video with other people that might find this interesting. Thanks so much, have a great day, and let's continue to learn things together.